Hi friends, I am Gayatri. Today's video on what is Johnson's Cook Material Model and why this model is required. Suppose you are doing an analysis, static analysis of a structure. At that time for the simulation, what material properties you are giving? You are giving Young's modulus of elasticity, Poisson ratio and density. But if this load is not static, some impact or sudden load is there and also some heat outside is there, some explosion is there. At that time, what material properties are required for the FE simulation because this type of situation you want to simulate. So how can we simulate this situation? So now this time we have to show the coupled effect of a strain, a strain rate and temperature also because whatever structure is deforming with respect to the time is a sudden deformed. But previously in a static load it's very slowly getting the deformation. So we have to see it is very high strain rate. So we have to see the coupled effect of a strain, strain rate and temperature. So how can we see for that distance Johnson's Cook material model is uh, required. So this is one of the material model and the result came from this uh, material model is approximately matching with the what experiment where the same simulation, simulation experiment if we will do the result will match. So okay what are these parameters and, and how these parameters affect the stress strain graph that we will understand through this video. Okay let's start to learn. So this is called the Johnson's Cook material model. This model is having three brackets. First bracket is showing a strain effect of the material, second bracket is showing a strain rate effect on the material and third bracket is showing the temperature effect on the material. So it's giving the coupled effect of these three. So what is the A? A is showing the yield stress of material under the reference condition. Generally this condition is taking as a quasi static process which is uh, find the properties in by using UTM machine. And this is also called a reversible process. Why? Because it's a very slow process. You are applying the very small load and very slowly. So it's regain their position. It's having the time to regain their position. So whatever structure is changing, you cannot see. And uh, up to the elastic limit, you cannot see. So that we generally we are seeing this type of the uh, quasi static process, stress strain graph we are seeing for different different materials. And B, what is B? B is showing the strain hardening constant that I will show you by using stress strain graph. N is a strain hardening coefficient. This is epsilon. Epsilon is showing the strain. C is the strengthening coefficient of a strain rate. Now this second packet is showing the strain rate effect. And also epsilon, that is a dot of epsilon is showing the strain rate. T is the temperature and M is the thermal softening coefficient. Now we will see all these parameters. Basically these are five parameters. One, two, this is three and four and this one the thermal softening coefficient. This five parameter we are applying for the FE simulation. So now the first step is showing the strain effect. How it looks? It's a stress strain graph is there. So this is stress, stress which is denoted as sigma and this is strain, x-axis is shown in a uh, strain, so it's a epsilon. So okay, this type of the graph. If you are seeing some SS material, suppose SS316 is stainless steel material. So how it will go? It will go like this and this and this. Here somewhere it's a rupture, it's a maximum ultimate stress position. And this is engineering stress. Engineering stress. This is stress strain graph finding through the experiment that will not engineering stress versus engineering strain. That is the true stress versus true strain graph. And that graph will not go down, that will keep on uh, increasing like that. This is called A, whatever elastic limit. This is the elastic reason. Okay, so in this region, this is the value of A. This is called yield stress of material under the reference condition. So this graph is fine through the reference condition means very uh, low strain rate we are using. Any reference uh, strain rate you can take. But generally we are taking the quasi static process in which strain rate is very low. If the strain rate is approximately uh, we are taking for the quasi static process suppose 0 0.001 like this. So it's a very slow process. So that we are taking as a reference strain rate. 
so for that reason this a is called yield stress of material so this is denoted as a and by this yield stress we are deciding the material is a uh, failure or pass uh, what is the allowable stresses there for the static condition so by taking some factor of safety so this suppose this is point 1 and this is point 2 and this is point 3 okay so if you see from point 2 to point 3 so graph is like this okay here in this condition point 2 to 3 graph is like that okay so what is the slope of this graph so the slope of this graph is denoted as b which is called strain hardening constant okay and if it's showing is like this this curve type of the graph is there so if graph is not curve type if uh, graph is curve type that time n equals to suppose 1 by 2 okay if it is straight line so this is this time n equals to 0 and if it is straight line so n equals to 1 this time so this n n is called strain hardening coefficient okay so if i will make the graph for n equals to 0 n equals to 1 by 2 and n equals to 1 so it will looks like this for n equals to 0 if i will make the graph so it will look like this and uh, if i will make this is for n equals to 0 and if i will make the graph for n equals to 1 by 2 so it will looks like this okay as this this graph is having some uh, curve so n value is the power it is co coming in the power if n equals to and uh, this is for suppose n equals to 1 by 2 it's not exact just i'm showing the graph and uh, if n equals to 1 so it's like this it's also called the bilinear graph so if this is n equals to 1 because both the case both the condition is a linear type is here also in here linear up to this limit up to last limit it is linear after that is a curve is having so this a b and we can understand how this parameters affect the stress strain graph so this a is shown yield stress of material at the reference uh, reference point and b is showing whatever slope of this graph is there and n is showing it's a curve or linear or whatever curve is there so accordingly n is changing and this is the strain okay so now we will see the second bracket what is the strain rate effect second term second term shows the strain rate effect on the flow stress the parameter is c how this parameter we can find the strain rate effect so this value is what this is the ratio of strain rate in which you are finding the impact loading at that time what strain rate is there divided by the reference strain rate reference strain rate generally we are taking as a uh, whatever we are finding the utm machine the cost static process that we are taking as a reference strain which is very low you can take one also one per second also so accordingly you have to find for this particular strain rate all the flow stresses what will be the effect of the strain rate on the flow stresses okay that we can see through the stress strain graph generally we are finding the stress strain graph through the experiment it will be the true stresses versus true strain so if you are having different different strain rate okay so how the graph will show so this is for 500 strain rate this is for 900 this is for 1100 this is not exactly i'm just for showing so as you are increasing the strain rate your flow stress is increasing so how this parameter is affect the flow stress how can we find this parameter so for that we have to find the strain rate versus this flow stress whatever st stress is there we can make the graph in between this so it may be some like this some graph is there so whatever the slope of that graph so it shows you the c value okay and it will be the ln of this and with the ratio also this c parameter this is strengthening coefficient of the strain rate so if you are having some different different strain rate you have taken so it may be the graph is like this like this so accordingly the c value will change so by defining the c value we can show up to this limit to this limit whatever strain rate is there 
because if you are impacting something so the strain uh, rate range will be there so it can go from 500 to 1500 standard like that so for that you will do some different different standards some different different experiments and find the flow stresses versus true stresses versus true strain graph and then you can find the c value like that so c value give you the effect on the flow stress uh, due to the strain rate changes okay now the third term what is the temperature effect will go on the flow stresses and this is the thermal softening coefficient this is the fifth parameter of jc material model okay so for that we will see the stress strain graph how the temperature will changing and due to the change of the temperature how the flow stress will change so suppose true stress versus true strain graph if we are making you will see you will see like this this type of the graph will come through the experiment here what is happening here as you are increasing the temperature like this is 500 degree centigrade this is 600 degree centigrade this is some 800 degree centigrade as you are increasing the temperature the flow stresses is decreasing so accordingly we can calculate the m value so we can find if the this is also having some range if your uh, um, impact load is there or some explosion is there so it's having the range it can go from this temperature to that temperature in that range of that temperature what will be the m value if you will put these five parameter in the fem solution in the simulations so you can find the exact results exact uh, result whatever you are finding in the experiment so here i have told you what are these five parameters what is the johnson's group material model now i will tell you why this johnson's group material model is required starting of this video i have told you it will give you the coupled effect of a strain the strain rate and temperature on the flow stress of that material if you are having some static type of analysis then what material properties is required for the fe simulation there were only three properties and if it is the coupled effect of a strain and strain rate and temperature at that time it, when it is a dynamic type of analysis sudden load is there that time inertia effect cannot be ignored but in a static analysis we can ignore the inertia effect so here we have to see what will happen if the strain rate is very high if the temperature is there then what will be happen for the flow stress of that material accordingly we have to uh, simulate so here some plane crashes is there some car crashes there and if you are designing a bulletproof car then how can you simulate this type of the situation so we can do some fe analysis in which the car is coming and with that impact load and some heat is also generated and for that time what material properties we are giving for this simulation so that the same situation what actually is happening in the experiment we can do through the simulation so this type of the some results is coming so we can see what is the failure plasticity and where this structure uh, will fail and we can do some experiment also so this is the experiments of the plane when the people are inciding and the plane is dropping from some height so what will effect will get this uh, people some structure how the structure is failure so whatever you are doing the analysis whatever you are putting this step of the parameters and uh, five parameter johnson's group parameter and you are giving the coupled effect by using the simulation by using the fe analysis but also you have to do one experiment two experiment also because you have to match each and every time whatever you have given this parameter what results are coming that actually through the experiment is coming or not so you can do some experiment and you can match the value if it is matching then you can do uh, lots of simulation lots of cases you can do so for particular material you have seen and you have given the material model and accordingly whatever result is finding so you can change the uh, value change the load and all then you can see how the material is uh, behaving how the uh, analysis is doing so exact failure when it is going to fail so you can find these things so in this video i have told you what is the johnson's cook material model and why this is required in the next video i will tell you 
through the experiment if you are finding the stress versus strain graph then how can you calculate this uh, johnson's group parameter if this video is helpful for you so please like and subscribe the video and uh, also if you are having some doubts so please ask through the comment box i will make this type of the video thank you very much Thank you.